Hey guys, it's Yeshua here, YeshuaBoyton.com, and in this video I want to talk to you about how to be set free by Jesus so you're not bound by this ugly sin anymore. And maybe you are in the situation where you're just struggling and you're just fighting that one thing or maybe several things over and over and over again. And maybe it's not you, maybe it's a friend that you that you know who's struggling and who needs to watch this video. I want to address exactly this problem, how to finally break through that cycle and get set free. Now, of course, we all know that you know famous saying, oh, you just have to go into the presence of God and He will take care of it and just uh, you know soak or rest in the presence of God and wait for Him and He'll set you free. <sighs> this is half true. Okay, I agree with it, but only to a certain degree, because of course it's God who sets you free. And of course the anointing breaks the yoke. And of course it's His Spirit, you know, who, who the Spirit of freedom, the Spirit of liberty, who gives us that liberty, who gives us that freedom. And of course, you know, it's Jesus, the mighty deliverer. But He's not delivering us from our friends, but from our enemies. And to make sin our enemy, requires some things from us. We have to be proactive. We have to take the first step. Yes, we do. And the first step is repentance, to come before God and acknowledge your sin, acknowledge that you messed up. And that's fine, there's no condemnation, right? You come before God and the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, that when we, from our heart, confess our sins, that He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God wants to cover our sin with His blood and with His forgiveness. That's His promise. But He also wants to deliver us and set us free. The Bible also says in Hebrews 12, 1, Let us now lay aside all sin that so easily ensnares us. So, we have to lay aside our sin. We have to be proactive, we have to make the step, not just say, okay, God, just deal with my sin and deliver me. He wants to do that, yes, but we have to make the first step, repentance, repent. Tell Him everything, just, just be honest. If you're struggling, tell Him. Come before God and, and just, just lay it down, lay it on the altar. Ask for forgiveness and turn. Make a decision to really turn from your sin into a new lifestyle freedom with God. Now the second step is that you renounce it, that you renounce this sin, that you make this sin your enemy, that you really take up your sword and say in Jesus name no more. See the Bible says in Isaiah 53 that the chastisement would, was put on him, on Jesus, for our peace, so that we could have peace. Our judgment, the curse, the result, the consequence of sin was put on him, not so that we would only be justified but that we would be truly set free. Yes, there is freedom from sin. I can testify to this myself where I was stuck in sin, where I really repented and really in Jesus name, you know, took hold of this promise that God wants to free me and that my judgment, this, this, this torment that sin keeps me in was put on him that I don't have to have this, that I don't have to carry this. When I took this as a truth for me and said in Jesus name, I renounce that chastisement and that consequence or that curse in Jesus' name. God really came in and set me free. But there was a, a third thing that I did. I told it to go in Jesus' name. And we can see that over and over in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, where Jesus actively tells things to go. So what things am I talking about? I'm talking about demonic forces. See, if there is a repetitive cycle that tries to pull you down and just really tries to, to destroy you in your life and the people around you, it is a demonic force. Another Bible verse is in Galatians 3, 13 to 14, where it says that Jesus has broken the curse of the law and that the curse was put on Him. And it's the same package as, you know, salvation, where we always say, hey, it's a free gift, you know, we just have to accept it. It's the same with this, this curse thing, it's, it's in, that, in that gift. We have, to, we have to accept it that Jesus broke the curse for us. And therefore we step into this authority and say, in Jesus' name, I'll break it right now. So we have to repent and we have to break the curse in Jesus' name, in His authority, in His power and through His blood. 
by his stripes we're healed, right? Well, why do we still suffer with sickness? Well, because the devil is a liar and the devil is still around. And it's our job to fight with God against it, against those things, against the enemy, against the devil. Now, with him, that means with the Holy Spirit. See, there's this one scripture where Jesus, for example, says, if I cast out demons by the Holy Spirit, you know that the kingdom of God has come to you. So the same applies for us. If we say in Jesus' name, those things need to leave now, need to leave my life, every oppression, every sickness, every addiction, every sin, anything that's really bothering and coming back and coming back and coming back, and any, any temptation even, you can tell those things to go in Jesus' name. And they have to bow their knee to Jesus Christ. Not to you, it's not your power. It's not by our power, not by our mind, but by His Spirit right? It's by His Spirit. The Bible says in Mark 16, hey, those signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. In my name they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And they will. They do. I can testify to this so often that when people pray for me in Jesus' name, it was not just, uh, and it, when it was not just a huffy fluffy prayer, but an honest prayer, when it was a real heart to heart prayer with Jesus, the power of God hit and God was moving and God was setting free. Sometimes even without, you know, saying I renounce it in Jesus' name. But oftentimes, especially, because when you make those things your enemy, if you repented and said I don't want it anymore in my life and broke the curse, and then the third step to really just tell it to go in Jesus' name, man, that's powerful. Like, look here, it's example. Someone breaks into your house. You're not just standing there and just watch him do whatever he wants to do, right? The same with this house, the temple of God, the house of God. You are the temple of God. You tell the intruder to go in Jesus' name, right? Sin is an intruder and the consequence of sin as well. And I'm not talking about hell sometime down the road, but I'm talking about the real consequences of sin right now here, the destructive consequences. For example, you lie, there's mistrust. You hurt someone with words, there's rejection feeling, or there's bitterness, there's anger, there's hatred, stuff like that. See, God wants to free you. God wants to set you free. I mentioned Galatians 3.13 with a curse. There's a verse 14 where it says that He wants us to be blessed. He wants to set us free from the curse so we're not taking off another box in our checklist but that we would truly be free to walk in the blessing God has prepared for us. That's what He has for us. That's what He wants for us. So I pray right now for everyone watching that God would move right now. Father, I ask You that You would release Your Holy Spirit right now over every person watching and Holy Spirit that You would lead into repentance, that You would lead right now into real deep prayer and a real deep deliverance and a real deep freedom. In Jesus' name I release it. Father, I ask you that you would come right now, that you would even bring conviction and fresh revelation about maybe deeper things that you want to work on. And Father, I release your blessing that you have for everyone in store. I release it right now. And I thank you, Father, for your holy presence, for your forgiveness, for your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you guys were blessed by this video, if you think it's helpful for someone else, please share it with a friend and I will see you in the next video. God bless you.